Hi, I'm Vicki Tanzi. Welcome to The Stop Show. This particular performance that you're about to see, called Syncopation, uh, was for me an idea that I felt I wanted to do because it was the beginning of my 80th year. And I thought this is the best thing to do to launch it. And so I chose the Brome Theatre where I'd never performed before and I just loved the quality of the space. And I called upon four musicians who all played instruments that I dearly wanted to have part of this. Amazing musicians, two of whom I met only an hour before the performance. And you need to understand that this entire performance was completely improvised. We, there were no rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And it's the kind of thing that you just leap into these things. And this is the kind of work I've been doing for at least, God, 45, 50 years. And, uh, it never it loses its draw or its sense of, ooh, what's gonna happen? Is this one gonna work or not? But it, you just keep doing it. You just keep making the leap. And all the musicians that I worked with are equally trained as I am as a dancer. They are equally trained and practiced as musicians. But this kind of relationship to step on a stage and not know what anyone's gonna do next is the kind of thing that becomes like almost like an addiction and you have to trust the people you work with. And in this case, it was just a wonderful coming together of people and what they had to offer. There's something theatrical about a theater. I usually start an improvisation by just appearing because I work often in places that are very unusual, like uh, galleries and barns and um, odd spaces, and which I love, which are very compatible with what I do. But in this case, the theatrical environment touched me in such a way that I thought, I want, how do we start here? That was the only plan, the start, other than that. So how do we start? And I just saw myself sitting alone on the stage with my back to the audience before they came in. And in, I was in, and in front of me at the back of the stage was this enormous painting that I had done um, a few years ago. It was about the news and it was loaded with information. So I thought, I just wanna sit there and be sitting quietly looking at that painting so that when the people come in to sit down, this is something they're not expecting. Uh, I don't know what, what their take will be, but I just needed to feel their arrival. 
There was a period I went through where everything I was doing, whether it was my visual art or my performance work, was based on the news. And it's interesting for me because um, when I first started out as an artist, I decided I was not political, I was not interested in politics, had nothing to do with art, and at the same time, I'm a human being and I'm in, in a world that has a lot happening. And uh, awareness and acknowledgement of that is really important if you're going to be part of this planet. And so I started actually paying attention to the news. But there's a limit for how much you can absorb of the news. Uh, if you're just listening and accumulating all these details and feeling the feelings you feel. To me, to have an art form through which I could bring that stuff was very essential because it made, in a way, it let me connect so deeply and personally with it um, in a way that I couldn't if it was just conversation with people about it all. And then I started to create work. I created a big theater piece with what, 16 people based on the news. I even was interviewing psychologists who worked with newscasters who, who, who kept losing. It, when they stepped out of the camera, they were carrying the weight of all this stuff. So I was so grateful to have an art form, both visual as well as in terms of my movement and sounds that I could work with with my voice that could let me go inside that in a way that was personal, very personal. For me, sitting in front of that painting was being reminded, actually, of how, how interconnected we are with all that happens around us. And it's so easy to ignore it. It's actually quite preferable to ignore it because it just puts a weight on you. But it keeps your mind and your heart and your uh, sensibility open. I was in the atmosphere of today's news, which, as everyone knows, is loaded with such disturbing stuff. And one of my musicians, um, Tevit Sela, the saxophonist, happened, we happened to have our first phone contact on the very day that Hamas attacked Israel, and he was Israeli. 
And that was our, the first three minutes of our connection was addressing that very thing. And there was no, there was no polit political alignment happening. It was just pure emotional distress uh, that there were, that these things were happening right here and now. And so for us to connect that way from the very first, that never left us, even though we never spoke about it. We never discussed it. There was no, nobody having to take sides. It wasn't about that at all. It was just about human, the human dilemma, you know? So that really, that, that was for me a very important or central connection going in, even though, as I say, we didn't talk about it. We didn't make it a subject of conversation and we didn't share it with the group. Everybody was just where they were. Syncopation actually was not a title that I gave it. Uh, my partner, Robert Bucklin, is the one who said, what do you think of this title? I went, wow, yes. He chose an image for our poster that was a, a drawing that I had done of two figures that you can barely discern the details of who they are, so they kind of represent everyone. And when Mike, the uh, pianist, saw the name, he went, ah, oh, and he started like, he started getting really excited about how he would translate that word because syncopation is a kind of like an interconnection and a uh, shifting in energy of a kind that musicians really get. It's very, actually, it's very much of a, a musician's world to talk about syncopation. So we just kind of let it hang without sitting down together and going, what do you think this means? Didn't have to do that.
I was born and grew up in Montreal, and I started dancing when I was nine years old. And I spent years and years studying classical ballet, and then I ended up joining a New York modern dance company, and I studied with Merce Cunningham in New York, and then I came back to Montreal, and I was with a modern dance company called La Groupe de la, la Place Royale, and I uh, worked with Pierre-Paul Savoy, and there's been a lot of... I taught dance in the dance department of Concordia University for many years, but my own shift from classical ballet to modern and then to improvisation was a very important shift for me because I'd spent a year out in Vancouver in the Va in 69 imagine in Vancouver in 69 <laughs> and it was like hippie hippie paradise you know and we were all in the process of breaking away from wherever we came from and I was still very much a trained dancer who danced choreographed works and or made chore choreographed works and we toured the province, this company that I was with out there for that year. We would take these pre-choreographed pieces and perform them in places where you had to really adapt to a place that didn't suit the shape of the choreography. So you were always having to compromise. And I remember at the end of that year of touring that when I came back to Montreal, because we were only gone for a year, I thought, I'm never, ever going to step on stage with a choreographed piece again. I didn't want to do someone else's vocabulary. I want, what, was, what was it that I could say that was really relevant to my life, whether it was my, about my children or my country garden or what, the politics? How could I do that? And so I spent three years looking for the door into that world of being able to improvise in public with no plan. And it happened. It happened, and when it happened, I was like, whew, okay, now, the, now comes the work. And I was performing strange things in metro stations, and I remember going, saying to one, an artist friend of mine at one point, I said, I, I'm, I don't know, you know, I've been trained as a dancer, I'm supposed to just be a dancer, aren't I? But I keep leaking into all these other art forms, and, and, then, and I remember one of them saying to me, so what's the problem? You know, just go for it. So this is when I started letting myself work what, in whatever expressive language I could. And I went to art school at one point, and I, so I had my dance, my arts, and I, I've always sung, and um, I've written poetry for years. So I thought, well, there it is. It's all there. Use it whenever it's appropriate. And, and it, I'm always surprised by how it comes out. <laughs> Thank you.
Um, I just want to thank you, all of you who have been listening to this, for your attention, for your interest. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us, not just the artists, but for you to be able to share what's going on in this community. Thank you. <laughs>